I'm William Brown. Please join me for a stroll down Fan Alley. A podcast where we examine the various types of fandoms. It is the fans which determine what is or isn't a success. We are starting with the late 60s daytime serial, Dark Shadows. My name is Victoria Winters. My journey is beginning. Dark Shadows ran on ABC from 1966 to 1971 for approximately 1,250 episodes. We begin with Rachel, a Dark Shadows fan from Missouri. I think I was in middle school, so probably about maybe 12 years old or so. And it was a snow day, as I recall, and I was just flipping through the channels and I came across the sci-fi channel. And I just remember this scene where there was a blonde woman wearing a period dress and she was either sticking a pin in a voodoo doll or I think it actually was the scene where she had wrapped up the... um, handkerchief to the soldier and was like choking him out and then you know that followed with Barnabas choking as Josette was freaking out so I don't know it was just something about I I just couldn't look away I'm like what what is happening here so it was kind of a happy accident I guess you could say uh years later I ended up getting the coffin set and then watching it uh, w- watching it uh, all the way through, and then uh, I want to say last year I finished another rewatch with it. I tried to get a friend involved with it, and he started watching it on Tubi, but he's got so many other things that he watches that he just kind of stopped watching it at some point. And I'm like, you're never going to get caught up if you stop watching it. <laughs> You know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, I would rush home to the VCR. I mean, it was taped and waiting for me, but it was the first thing I wanted to do when I got home from school. Well, I really connected with Victoria Winters, especially in the beginning, because she's the first person that that really is supposed to connect with the audience. And I, I liked when they sent her back in time. Catherine Lee Scott's characters, you know, Maggie Evans, Josette... Uh, Rachel Drummond, probably just because she and I have the same name. <laughs> Not, I don't have the last name, but you know what I mean. Um, I, I remember watching as a kid when they got to that storyline with um, Maggie being terrorized by Quentin. And there's there's one episode where she's sitting alone in, uh, I think it's uh, the old house possibly, and Barnabas appear, you know, Barnabas enters the room and sees that she's, holding this old-fashioned style dress and she was like well he he kept on calling me by this other name and i'm sitting there going wouldn't it be funny if it was rachel and it was and i just laughed i'm like oh that's so awesome uh they can contact me on twitter at soul twin audios and soul is spelled s-o-l-e uh they can also find me on um my projects are found on anchor at uh anchor.fm slash soul twin audios It's timeless. It's a show that I'll continue to love, continue to rewatch. And I actually had the opportunity to go to a Dark Shadows festival back in 2009. You know, that would be something that I would love to attend again at some point. Dark Shadows, it's it's near and dear to my heart. It's helped me get through some rough times. That was Rachel from Missouri. Paul is from Boston. In Massachusetts, a nice New England town that's just south of uh, Collinsport, Maine. And I started watching Dark Shadows at the early age of about, I was about seven at the time. It was about the second season where the introduction of Barnabas uh, had started. My grandmother used to uh, watch me after I got home from school. I think I was only in like the second grade, first or second grade. And when I'd get home from school in the afternoon, uh, both my parents worked. So my grandmother, who lived upstairs on the second floor from us, I would go up there and she, uh, she'd she kind of watch me for a few hours until my one of my parents got home from work. So B, uh, 
she was uh, always into her afternoon soap operas, my grandmother. So she'd watch like Secret Storm or Edge of Night or, or whatever those were back in the day, back in the 60s. And uh, once those were over with, you know, Dark Shadows would come on. I think it was about 3.30, 3.30 or 4 o'clock start time on the East, East Coast then. I had no interest in their soap operas, but I guess one day I was sitting there with her because I was bored out of my mind and, she, you know, the Dark Shadows had come on and I started watching it with her and she says, oh, I never saw this one before. So we started watching it and it was right around the introduction of Barnabas, like I said. So um, I was instantly hooked because I was always into uh, horror and vampirism and werewolves and those things, witches and goblins. So uh, I kind of got hooked on it and then I, I got my grandmother into it. And, you know, and then I watched the whole series uh, from there and after uh, the whole. I watched every day. If I was, you know, running home from school, that's what I was doing. If I didn't want to be late and miss it. And I used to get really perturbed on the, it was around the same time as the, uh, you know, we were, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and we were the first men to walk on the moon, they would uh, interrupt Dark Shadows so they could bring you a special uh, announcement about the uh, the moon the moon landing and uh, i was being 7 years old i was i had no interest in that i just wanted to see my dark shadows so but uh i used to get a little perturbed at that because then what they would do is when they would cut back to the show uh they wouldn't sh- show what you had missed so you would probably you know i would miss uh, a scene or two uh whatever and it used to kind of get me a little perturbed but yeah, uh, that's that's that. Back in the day, we didn't have DVRs and we couldn't record things like that, like we can now. But then uh, that's how it started. And like I said, my grandmother was a faithful follower along with myself. And then you know, as we progressed and watched all the storylines, my favorite storyline, I guess, was uh, have to be the 1897 one. I know a lot of people, their favorite is the 1795 arc because that's where they show. Uh, you know, the introduction of how Barnabas became a vampire and the whole uh, introduction of Evangelique and that storyline with Victoria Winters going back into his time. But um, I, I like that one as well. But my favorite, I guess, was 1897 because it it just was a, it was just a really well written. I, I thought it was the best written storyline out of all of them in the series. And it was it was really long, too. I think it was close to 200 episodes. So that that 1897 storyline pretty much ran, I think, about uh, close to a year, if not more than a year. But that was my favorite. It had a lot of a lot of little subplots and little storylines going in, on at the same time as the major storyline. So care for that one? I thought it was senseless and drawn out, and it was just a, another little uh, take on the Frankenstein monster. But uh didn't care for that one too much i didn't really care for the dream curse too much either but um i also like the leviathan storyline a lot of people don't like that one but i think it's because a lot of people didn't understand it and i think dan curtis was just trying to change things up a little bit and get a little bit darker and deeper and into um a different genre of horror so i like that one uh, although that one ran out of gas pretty quick but uh, I enjoyed Christopher Pennock in that as well. Uh, when he, he was a zany little guy, and uh, I, uh, I actually chatted with him a, uh, not a lot, but I chatted with him from time to time here on, on Messenger on Facebook. Uh, he was a wild and crazy guy, and he's he's very much missed. He's been gone a little over a year now, but uh, he was uh, really a really great crazy guy to talk to, and, and uh, he always he loved uh, hearing from his fans. Uh, the villagers, as he called us, we were the villagers. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, I have, even to this day, I still have, I have, uh, I have the coffin set, which my, my children bought for me. Uh, they bought me for Christmas about five years ago. So I have the complete, uh, series in the coffin set and I've already watched it a couple of times through the whole series, uh, for some, including the mess- uh, episodes that I had, may have missed during my youth. So some of them I didn't remember, and I was like, I don't remember this. But then, you know, it all comes back to you. But uh, I enjoyed it very much. I watched like four or five episodes per viewing, you know, kind of binge watch that. So I'm actually just finishing up the 1897 storyline as we speak, and I'm moving on to the Leviathan storyline. Sometime this week I'll be starting that again. So uh, that's that. 
my also my my least favorite. I don't know if I mentioned this. Or I said it was the Adam and Eve, but I also did not care for the way the series ended. Uh, I didn't have any interest in the 1841 parallel time. It just, you know, it was just, I just, uh, it had no, no, revel- no relevancy to the main characters for the first three and a half years of the series to me. I don't know. But I also wish they had a final episode. They could have saved at least 10 minutes of the last scene to show back in the current time where maybe you know the present day collins is including barnabas and and quentin and everybody they all and julia and liz roger they all get together and maybe raise a toast to each other saying that you know at last all the all the uh, evil spirits and and everything was uh kind of gone from collinwood that would have been a nice ending i think a nice fitting ending for the fans uh, but of course, they didn't see it that way. I've always heard the excuse that they, the writers didn't have time to write that in. I mean, come on, it would have taken all of five minutes. I'm sure they could have squeezed that in the last five minutes of the show. But anyway, that's that, and it is what it is. Um, as far as my favorite character in the show, um, I would have to say uh, probably Angelique. I just those mesmerizing eyes just got me. Bang. Even at a young age, as soon as I saw those eyes, I was, I was just transfixed on her all the time, and it's hard to believe that she was only in, I believe it was 205 episodes. I've, I've read somewhere 205 episodes she was in, and that's amazing because there was 1,225 episodes total, and it just seems like she was in a, a lot more episodes than that. But this goes to show you the power that she had. Uh, uh, of uh, fixations that people would have whenever she was in an episode, you know, all eyes were glued to the TV when she was in an episode. So she was probably, yeah, she was my favorite character. I also liked, uh, I liked David Selby. I liked Quentin. I liked his character a lot and the different Quentins that he portrayed. And I also, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed Thea David uh, as Ben. Um, He played, I think seven, seven, total seven characters in the series including the movie so uh but i liked uh i liked the ben stokes character a lot back in uh 1795 and i think they also showed him again in 18 uh 1840. um so that's about it really uh i also have no love uh lost for the tim burton and johnny depp tragedy of a movie Ugh, when they did that movie that was terrible it was just an abomination i went to the theater the first day it was out i was all excited about seeing it and then when i found out it was you know when i watched it it was more like a just like a fast and it was like a comedy and they kind of like tim burton making fun of dark shadows is which what, what it was and it was totally hum- humiliating i just I, no respect for tim burton after that so didn't like that movie at all I watched it once, and that's it. That's I will not watch it ever again. That was Paul, a staunch fan from Boston. And finally, we have Maria, a fan from Chicagoland. Um, I got introduced to Dark Shadows through my father. Um, my father um, w- would take me to the video store back when we had video stores, and he would always point out these videotapes, these VHS tapes that said dark shadows and had this scary looking guy on the box and you know obviously that was barnabas and he would always say oh man i love this show i love the show so much back in the day we all used to watch it and you know me being i don't know about nine or ten i was like yeah you know yeah dad whatever you know (laughs) as kids do i wasn't you know i didn't share his enthusiasm it just looked kind of weird and old and scary and boring to me um but there was something in the back of my mind that thought well gee like supposedly the show's pretty old and you know someone went through the trouble to put all these episodes on video and they're still being watched today like i guess there's you know there must be something to it so finally he convinced us to me and my sisters to um to watch a tape and so you know some of you may be familiar with the old mpi vhs dark shadows tapes and there were five episodes like a week's worth of episodes so 
we watched one tape and I'm trying to remember what story it was. I want to say it was towards the beginning. It might have been like Barnabas kidnapping Maggie. I think it was still black and white. Um, and we watched five episodes and boom, that was it. I was done. I was hooked. <laughs> Forever a fan. And and also, strangely enough, or coincidentally, um, every time I've shown somebody, you know, like thereafter, I would show somebody. I'd be like, oh, my God, there's the show you got to see. It's so great. And I would show them one tape, five episodes, and they were infected. Like it was like passing a virus along. Like once you saw five episodes, that was pretty much all you needed and you were hooked. So um, that's how I got introduced. It was the MP MPI VHS tapes, you know, from the video store. So, um, yeah, and then we, it was like an addiction. Every weekend we had to go to the video store and get the tapes. And, you know, we were watching in order, you know, not every video store had tapes. So we would have to like search and, and some stores had, you know, these episodes and other stores had other episodes and we'd be driving for miles around some, I guess we would call the video stores and ask them what episodes they had, what tape numbers they had. So we'd be driving all over the place because we had to like get our dark shadows fixed and we had to like watch, you know, everything in order. My favorite character is Angelique like hands down the favorite always has been since I was a kid and of course you know love Laura Parker like oh my god there wouldn't be an Angelique you know without her I think I don't know I'm not sure what appealed so much to me I think I always have liked villains and she was just the best villain ever <laughs> so you know she had the vulnerability she had the powers she enjoyed using her powers she was angry <laughs> something i could relate to even as like a kid she was wrong she used her powers to get back at people i don't know i should tell this all to my therapist but um i just related to that so much and of course I do love, I honestly, I love all the other characters too, all the other actors and characters. There isn't really anyone I don't like. I really love every aspect of the show, every, like every storyline, every character, every actor. Um, I mean, are there characters that annoy me? Sure, sometimes, but like, I just like them all and I like their contribution. As far as my other characters that I like, um, I love, I love Professor Stokes and I also love Julia. And the reason why I love them in particular is because they're the kind of people I want to be. Like they don't have any powers. They don't have anything, you know, they, they can't turn you into a toad or anything. They just have their brains. Their brains are their superpower. They just know everything or they at least know a little bit of everything and they keep a cool head in these very unusual dangerous situations so like yeah i just i want to be elliot when i grow up i want to be professor stokes just like so smart and like smart to the point where like my brain protects me and i don't even need a special power uh, uh favorite like storylines um i like i like every storyline <laughs> like at least an aspect of every storyline even the ones that people don't like, like the Leviathans, for example, I like that storyline. Is it weird? Yes. Is it unlike anything else on the show? Absolutely. Um, and it, it, made, it made me uncomfortable in a way because it was breaking a lot of the rules of the show. Like the show was so insular and, you know, Colin Wood was just sort of a it was like a tomb in itself, like nothing entered and nothing left. They all sort of stayed in Collinwood or on the estate and nothing really entered from the outside. And, you know, the outside world just didn't exist. Anything from, you know, TVs to holidays or uh, even like current events in the news, like that stuff didn't penetrate Collinwood. And the Leviathan story was sort of the outside world coming in and it was breaking all kinds of rules where they were meeting all sorts of new people from the town. They were interacting with people from 
supposedly all over the world. People were coming from around the globe to, you know, Collinsport. And uh, yeah, the zombies. I mean, it was just all kinds of weird things that I guess as a as a diehard fan, maybe you wouldn't like. But and I didn't like it at first, but I grew to appreciate it. But I appreciate everything that's on the show um, in one way or another. And I love the kids. I love the evil kids <laughs> in the Leviathan story. But honestly, the Leviathan story technically isn't my favorite storyline. It's just one that I, I feel I always have to defend, you know, because most people don't like it. Um, I wouldn't say I have a favorite storyline, but my favorite part of every storyline is when they go into a new time and you're introduced to everyone and the circumstances that everyone is in, like going into 1795, going into 1897, going into 1840 or parallel time, you, you're getting a feel for everything and everyone's so strange and different. You know, it's the, it's the same actors, but you're like, OK, what's his deal? You know, what's Roger's deal in this time, in this place? And what does he think about these people and what's going on with him? So it's it's nice to get reintroduced to everyone all over again and sort of like feel your way through a new story and a new time, the way the characters are, the ones who are traveling through time. That's sort of universal for every time travel, time jumping story. I love the introduction, you know, the episodes in order. And part of the reason why it's taken me so long, besides wanting to savor everything and really appreciate every episode I take in, um, I have this weird thing about where I need to watch the episodes in a certain way. Like, ideally, I would love to watch the show on TV like it was watched originally. Like back when it was on the sci-fi channel, back then I didn't have the sci-fi channel, so I couldn't really watch it. Um, but I would, that's sort of the way that I want to watch the episodes. Um, I kind of don't like the fact that I can just, you know, throw in a DVD or just go to Amazon Prime or whatever and just, you know, stream episodes. But I mean, that's kind of the only way I can watch things now or watch Dark Shadows now. Um, that's the only way it is available. Um, but I think a lot of the time I was just kind of waiting for it to show up on TV somewhere so I could watch it. Actually, it is on decades. I forgot about that. But I feel like they keep showing the same few episodes, or the same early episodes over and over. And also, I'm not really watching TV at five in the morning or whenever it comes on. But um, yeah, so it's just like work in progress. I'm up to, so I haven't seen all of the beginning, the pre-Barnabas um, that's a whole world in itself that I haven't touched yet. And as far as like the quote main show, I've made it up to 1840. Um, I haven't seen the end and I'm, I've developed a really good skill of being unspoiled. I don't really know what happens next. I've seen some things and, you know, some things have slipped through. I've been spoiled a little bit, but I'm actually really good at avoiding spoilers, you know, 50 years later. Um, so yeah, no, no spoilers, no one spoil me, but, um, yeah, I haven't seen the whole show. Um, and I, I'll probably still be watching the show, you know, it'll still be new to me in probably 20 years and I'll be very sad when I finally see the whole thing. And then I'm going to watch it all over again. That was ever so faithful fan Maria from Chicago. I want to thank the fans who participated in this podcast, Rachel from Missouri, Paul from Boston, and Maria from Chicago. To them, I say thank you for lending me your time. Excerpts from Dark Shadows and the soundtrack by Robert Colbert are copyrighted by Dan Curtis Productions and are used under fair use. The theme for the Fan Alley podcast is by Alton Leonard, Fan Alley is produced by your host, William Brown, at James Spring Studios. Executive producer for Atlanta Radio Theater Company is Brian Smith. If you liked what you've heard, hit the like button and subscribe to Artsy, the Atlanta Radio Theater Company. And join us next time for a new episode when we stroll down Fan Alley. Peace be with you, my friends. <laughs>